You are looking towards St Leonard's Forest in Sussex. St Leonard's is part of the Iron Rich High Weald, a sandstone ridge pushed up 140 million years ago when Africa collided with Eurasia. The same event built the Alps. The River Mull rises here, but under the name of the Eyford Brook. The body of water comprising the Mull flexes its muscles here, south of Eyford, but the source of the main flow is just south of Rosper. The proximity of iron water and trees gave rise to the Wildian iron industry, dating back to prehistoric times. Eyford Mill was originally a forge. It was rebuilt as a flour mill. The water wheel winched the grain to the top of the mill, which gravity fed it to the grindstones, also powered by the water wheel. Ground flour came out on the ground floor. This is an overshot wheel, which is composed of buckets that are fed by the mill pond. Overshot wheels are used when the water doesn't have a rapid flow rate, but can be collected into a large area. Along with iron and milling, rabbiting was another local industry. The mole and its tributaries form the most biodiverse river in England. This may be surprising given the origins of its main flow, which is joined here by the Eyfield Brook. Mole is probably a corruption of the Latin mola, meaning mill, but when the main body of the mole emerges from the mud in Rosper, a less exotic etymology could be believed. The mole's earthly origin from the Wildian clay appears confirmed by its first injection of treated effluent. For most of its distance, the mole flows over clay, which doesn't absorb water, and so the river's flow is very dependent on rainfall. In drought, the reliability of treated sewerage outfall keeps the river and the life around it going. Here at Badhorns Park, just a half a mile downstream from its humble origin, it seems closer to heaven than earth. The heavenly thread is woven even more intimately as it heads northeast towards Gatwick Airport. Given that aeroplanes and rivers should generally be kept separate, the mole burrows under the Gatwick runways via a culvert. However, it emerges into something quite surprising. This is an entirely man-made nature reserve that was created in 1999 when the mole was diverted under the airport. This golden ringed dragonfly lives in a planned but species-rich environment full of insect, plant and aquatic life, which these chubs seem to be enjoying. Another southern tributary is the Gatwick Brook, which rises near Worth in West Sussex. However, by the time it gets to Gatwick, it is also mostly Crawley's treated sewage. However, these water lilies host brown trout, chub, roach, pike, gudgeon, bullhead, and other fish such as lamprey, stone loach, and maybe least minnows. Once it passes Gatwick, the mole heads north into a surprisingly isolated and rural corner of Surrey. The river swings west at Sidlow, where it is joined by its easternmost tributary, which is largely contributed by the relief folk of Red Hill. It's 1940. After the British Army had been evacuated from Dunkirk and an invasion by the dreaded Hun was expected any minute, the Prime Minister, Churchill, had said we will fight them on the beaches and in the fields. Well. This is one of the fields he had in mind. The Germans might develop the tiger and the panther, but the British had the mole. Its westward turn was incorporated into the GCHQ General Headquarters Line A, out of London. GHQ then thought building tanks might be a better way forward. This pike's guarding its home. In the distance you can see the top of Leith Hill, where the mole's westernmost tributary, the Pit Brook, rises. So you can see that the mole formed a lengthy, if not very wide, natural barrier. Did I mention carp along with the trout and the chub? Well, here are some at one and mill.
And here is a male bandy damselfly at Betchworth. The cupola belongs to the Grade 2 listed Betchworth House. Perhaps its most illustrious occupant was Henry Goulburn, 1784-1856. He was Chancellor of the Exchequer twice, maybe in part because he allowed, on payment of a small annual fee, anyone to sell beer. This was revolutionary at the time. Betchworth Church is Grade 1 listed. The Wildean clay that the mould follows up to Betchworth was laid down around 130 million years ago in river deltas that were sometimes inundated by shallow seas. But now we are entering the Surrey Hills. On the left is the 120 million year old sandstone of the Hive Formation and on the right is the 90 million year old chalk of Box Hill. At Brockham the river is deflected towards the softer chalk by the harder sandstone. This is a female banded damselfly below Betchworth Castle, which was deliberately ruined by its owners in the 1830s, apparently for parts. The site dates back to the 1100s. So now the mole travels towards Box Hill and the gap the river has eroded through the chalk of the North Downs. Also at Box Hill, the mole is joined by its westernmost tributary, the Pip Brook, which drains the northeastern slopes of Leith Hill. The brook is untreated spring water and is full of fish such as gudgeon and chub. Just below the confluence with the brook, the GHQ line reasserts itself. The escarpment of Box Hill was defended by an anti-tank ditch and the banks of the mole were raised. There are also anti-tank cylinders where the banks were not raised to allow cows to cross. With that kind of planning, the Bosch did not stand a chance. These stepping stones were also temporarily removed using the same cold military logic. The name Box Hill is due to the abundance of box trees on the river cliff known locally as the Whites, a reference to the areas where the cliff is too steep even for the trees to hang on. On the other side of the Mole Gap, the river heads to Wolds and cuts through Norbury Park. The manor once tells Mary Stopes, the family planning and sex guru. Her book Married Love was published shortly after she divorced her husband on the grounds of non-consummation. Some of the Mole disappears under the chalk into sinkholes to re-emerge around Leatherhead where it runs into the watertight London clay. It then flows north under the M25 through the dormitory towns of Stoke Dabenham and Cobham. This egret is fishing at Leatherhead Bridge, which dates back to the 1780s but replaced the medieval structure. It's Grade 2 listed. Immediately on the other side of the M25, the mole flows past St Mary's Church, which is in part Saxon and dates back 1,300 years. It is claimed to be the oldest church in Surrey. Next door is another place of worship, Chelsea FC's training ground. Around Cobham, the fall of the river increases, providing more power for mills. Cobham Mill was one of the smallest, 
its big brother, was partially demolished by a Canadian tank. In 1993, the mill was restored by local enthusiasts and provided flour for the first time in 64 years. Cobham also houses the folly of Paynes Hill Landscape Park. The water wheel lifts water from the mole to fill it its lake. The orgy of the picturesque is eventually interrupted by the intervention of the A3. The other side of the A3 is the last natural stretch of the mole as it flows past the sand ledges of Isha Common and through Hersham Riverside Park. At Hersham things get confusing. The mole once split into two channels as it meandered towards its confluence with the River Thames. One of these channels became known as the River Ember. The other channel remains the Mole and entered the Thames where Hampton Court Bridge now stands. One odd effect of this is that the main body of the river suddenly transitions from the Mole into the Ember at Molesey where a remnant of the old Mole is channelled off. However, the new ember also flows alongside a stretch of the old ember. These various strands are brought together opposite Hampton Court where the old ember once flowed into the Thames. So this is the official end of the mole at East Molesey where it meets the ember again. But the local anglers seem to believe that the old ember channel is the mole by any other name. So is this really the end?